Hey, brilliant authors. I pitch stories to executives in entertainment several times a year. And the reason I do that is because I head up a book publishing division of an entertainment network and all of the book projects get approved by the upper management in the entertainment side. Okay, so I'm gonna be talking about how I pitch stories to executives and producers. There's a lot of different ways to do it. All right, the first thing I'll say, whether you have a pitch meeting or you have an appointment with an editor and agent, like you do sometimes at writing conferences, right? If you're writing a novel. Um, when you meet with the person, take a minute or two to make small talk, just get to know them on a personal level, you know, just like two human beings do. All right, unless it's like some crazy like speed pitch appointment thing, you know, I don't know, like you have a minute to sell your novel or something like that, right? Uh, but otherwise, uh, if the time permits, just take a minute or two to go ahead and chat. I have been in the situation, though not lately, I just got done doing like taking two days of pitches. I think I got about 35 pitches and everybody did a really nice job of this. But in the past, I have had this situation where I sit down with someone who wants to pitch me their novel and I am starting to say, hey, how are you? Where are you from? But they interrupt me <laughs> to just like go right into their pitch, you know, and it's fine you know i don't hold it against them because i understand they do it because they're nervous still it's going to be a little more graceful if you go ahead and make that small talk first all right with your pitch the first thing you want to lead with is a one to two sentence summary of what your project is what it's about and you've probably heard about this part i think this is not going to be a surprise to you and it's called a log line a lot of times and uh, but it's just this really tight summary. Now I have a blog post about what high concept is because a lot of people have been confused by that term and so you can look at the link in the description if you want to check out that blog post. It has some descriptions of those one to two sentence uh, summaries. Okay, it's really going to vary uh, depending on the project uh, but you want to start with that first and from there you want to introduce each main character kind of, you know, an, an adjective maybe about their personality, what they do for a living, etc., and their character arc. This is the thing that took me a little while to learn, to go ahead and put the character arc right when you introduce the main character in a pitch. The character arc, if I've lost you there, is the way the main character changes or learns or grows throughout the story. So, you know, it's a farm boy, Luke Skywalker, who becomes a Jedi Knight, right? Uh, it's a nurse in Chicago who overcomes the, her grief after her husband has died and goes and finds love again. You know, it's a busy exec who learns that it's okay for him to ask for help. You know, whatever they are learning, however they're growing, you go ahead and say that right when you introduce the character. Now, I am gonna say that when I started doing this, and I did it for a couple of my own uh, story ideas that I pitched, it felt like the most schlocky, ham-handed thing in the world, you know? It felt reductive. Um, not sophisticated, I guess. Uh, but I learned that first of all, it made me think very clearly about my story and it also conveyed the story really clearly. So that is something I really recommend. So once you've had the log line, you've introduced each of your main characters with their character arcs, then with the story, you can't say everything that happens in your story. It'll be boring, it'll be a mess, right and uh, whoever is listening is going to get really impatient and so what you want to do instead is hit the highlights okay uh, so think about if you were doing a book trailer or a movie trailer what scenes would you put in that trailer okay if, it, if you're pitching a novel which scenes would you like them to open to first in the bookstore right so your funniest scene your coolest action scene your sexiest scene whatever those are the scenes that you want to hit on in the pitch one of the most important things i think in a pitch is enthusiasm so if you seem really excited about your project 
it's infectious, you know? People kind of believe you, you know? It must be exciting. And if you seem really, you know, apologetic about your project, then no one's gonna believe that it's any good. Um, why should anyone else really be excited about your story if you're not excited about it, right? If it's five minutes before your pitch appointment with an agent, you know, or your pitch meeting with a producer, and you suddenly have all these doubts and you think, oh, this is just the stupidest thing in the world and uh, this has been done a hundred times or this is so weird, nobody would want it, right? Um, if you're having all those feelings, I don't care. Go in there and fake it. Fake, fake, fake it. You can do it. Uh, just go in there and exude confidence, all right? Not a glimmer of doubt. That's how you want to do it. Um, and never, Give them a reason to say no. Never say, for instance, I know this is a little bit out of your wheelhouse. Never say, I know I've never, you know, written a script before. All right, none of that, absolutely not. It may be their job to tell you no, but it's sure not your job. It's never your job to tell yourself no. So never help them out with that. They have to get to their no all on their own. You're not going to give them any reason. So let's say you do your pitch, you did a fantastic job, you exuded confidence like a rock star, and they say, well, you know, sorry, but we're just not doing that kind of story right now. It's not even your fault. And this happens all the time. This happened a couple of times with the pitches I took in the last couple of days where they, there was nothing wrong with the pitch. They did a good job. It sounded like a good story. We're just not doing that right now. So what if that happens? Do you just say, okay, thank you, and, and then slink away? Not if you have more time. If you've got more time, use it. What you wanna do is pivot, and now, instead of a pitch meeting, this just became a networking meeting, all right? So now you want to just get to know them and make a personal connection with them. Like, oh, are there other types of stories that you're getting pitched a lot that you're saying no on? That's a great question. Or Oh, well, l let me take this time to learn a little bit more about you. What are some challenges that, you that you're facing a lot in your job lately? You know, just anything like that. So now, congratulations, you have a connection. You might come back to that person later with another project. You know, take notes after you're done with that pitch meeting, everything they said. <laughs> a year later, you could be, I thought it was really interesting when you said this, you know, when you're pitching them the new thing. You can't believe how often, um, People get a deal, a book deal or a movie going forward, etc. after striking out the first time, after striking out the second time, okay? So no worries at all, just pivot from pitch meeting to networking session. Heads you in, tails you in. Go ahead and ask me any questions you have about pitching a story. I hope this was really helpful. And oh, and subscribe if you're interested in things about writing and books. and. If you, uh, if you have a pitch coming up, or if you do, you know, somewhere in the near future, I hope it goes well. I'm sending you my good vibes. All right. Thanks, everybody, and happy writing.